Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Today I have another scope review for you. This one, a bit controversial probably, and that is of the Arkin Optics EP8 1-8 first focal plane LPVO. Let's get into it. So to start this out, I did get this free from Arkin Optics. There is a bunch of hubbub out there about Arkin, like uh, buying reviews and things like that. There's a, there's videos out there about it. There's Reddit posts, which I don't take very seriously to begin with, uh, but there's all kinds of stuff out there about Arkin buying reviews. And in fact, I want you to go watch a video after this one's over, of course, uh, from my buddy over at Focus Trip. He did a, uh, he. No, it was, it's not an accusatory uh, video, but he did a video talking about said rumors. And in that video, he talks about Arkin sending out free scopes, like I got. Arkin sending out free giveaway scopes, which I also got. And Arkin sending out ammo, which I also got. The ammo was by request of me. I asked that of basically all optic companies there's only been a couple i have not and that is because the amount of money that i spend putting rounds down range i don't do unboxings i don't do short-term videos uh, i put hundreds if not thousands of rounds on an optic rifle or something like that before i really give you uh, my opinion on it most of the time and <clears throat> at a whatever between three and four hundred dollar scope uh, even if i sell this on the aftermarket uh, after i'm through with it after the drop test and all that assuming it survives which i haven't done yet uh, i will not get anywhere near the money back in that i spent on ammo gas food and everything else it takes to just make a single optic video and so I normally request uh, ammo. Now, why am I starting out the video talking about the rumors and hubbub about this particular, not this particular optic, but Arkin optics in general? Uh, because I have always been honest in my reviews and I want you to be able to go out and see the things that are being said. I have a lot of respect for Focus Trip. I have a lot of respect for John and his channel. Um, and I think he does fantastic work. And so I do want to point you to these things that are being said. That way you can make your own judgment on me, just like the two gentlemen in his video that have already accused me of lying about this review even though I haven't made it yet. So if you wanna support the channel and you like this sort of content, you can hit that like, share, subscribe button, hit that notification bell, remember to hit all notifications. That is the simplest and easy, easiest way to support the channel. Remember to leave a comment down below, especially you guys that are accused me of being a shill or accuse me of lying about this review when I don't even know how it's gonna turn out yet. You can also become a member of the channel buy from any of my affiliate links. Speaking of affiliate links, I have no other uh, relationship with Arkin. I don't make any money, I have no affiliation, and I have no monetary uh, uh, deals with Arkin Optics. So, unfortunately, I have to go through all of that just to get into the review. So let's do that now. Let's get into the review of the Arkin EP8 8 by 28 LPVO, first focal plane scope. 
So some quick specs about this guy. Uh, I have well over a thousand rounds on this optic to this point, probably around 1500. Uh, and I have shot it out to 352 yards. with Frontier 556, which is what we will be using for the drop test and checking to see if it holds zero. It is a 7075 T6 aluminum uh, body. It has a 34 millimeter tube. 34 millimeter is uh, something that more companies are starting to do. Some have still lagged behind and are sticking around that 30 millimeter tube. Uh, 34 millimeter allows for a ton of light transfer uh, a ton of image transfer and it helps with the overall quality of the scope now eye relief on this thing is damn near four inches it is i have a full view here and i'm starting to get some scope shadow there so at one x at one x it's a very forgiving eye box at eight x I come right down on and it doesn't get, it doesn't really change much, which is nice. Oftentimes you get uh, a very much more constricted eye box uh, and ability to have your head in different places, your eye relief, when you go from like a 1X to 8X. This doesn't choke down nearly like some other ones I've had in the past. And part of that is due to the 34 millimeter tube. Now field of view at 100 yards is a very respectable 121 feet at 100 yards and almost 18, or I'm sorry, almost 15 uh, at 8X. So it has a very forgiving eye box, has very forgiving eye relief, and it has exceptional performance at uh, 100 yards as far as the field of view. So check all those boxes off. Now this is an MOA. It has scope caps here that are loose with your turrets there. Very nice clicking, very nice audible and tactile uh, adjustment in the turrets. Uh, it doesn't just glide through like some do and things like that. So you're not going to <coughs> accidentally go two, three clicks too far, things like that. It does have two night vision settings and up to eight, I believe eight. Let me double check that. Oh, nine, uh, nine uh, illumination settings. Now, the illumination in this, just like in many LPBOs, is not the best. It's not horrible, but it's not the best. Uh, at, in full daylight, if I rotate this guy to nine, the circle dot, or the circle, with the very small, very fine kill box reticle, lights up pretty well. It's very bright out here, as you can tell. Um, I'm not really losing it on backdrops and things like that. Now in now in uh, dark settings, the brightest setting is way too bright, uh, so you do have to dial that back a little bit. But this has worked very well under white light conditions and low light conditions. So how does the image look? At 1X, it is, as best I can tell, a true 1X, or really, really close to a true 1X. I don't get any warping or fisheye around the edges or throughout the image. I get very, very good color saturation, uh, very clear. It has Japanese glass, which I know uh, there's people out there that, are, that um, have minimized Japanese glass being in optics, but... Um, if you're not aware, Chinese glass, there's variations of Chinese glass, there's variations of Japanese glass, and then there's German glass. Japanese glass, depending on where at in that 
gray area of Japanese glass, uh, you can get very, very good glass. And it should not be minimized that a scope that comes in at this price is using Japanese glass. So I mentioned the reticle being very fine, that killbox reticle, which we'll get into some of the details of that here in a second. Uh, the killbox reticle is very, very fine. However, there is a massive ring around the reticle that takes up about a third of your view in uh, on one X that really helps to, it's a segmented circle, uh, really helps to focus your eye in down on that very fine reticle. Now, why is that reticle so fine? Well, on the higher the throw or the higher the magnification, so one to four, one to six, one to eight, one to 10, right? You cannot have a very, very thick or bold reticle at 1x and then expect the higher magnification, being in this case 8x, to be a very fine point or very fine aiming point. Um, so it is not uncommon for uh, LPVOs in this realm of 1 to 8 or 1 to 10 to have a super fine reticle at 1x, but then it becomes super, super usable at the higher magnification 8x. So into the function of it, the function of it, I've told you about the turrets here. The throw lever does come with it and it is removable. It unscrews and screws in. The throw of it is nearly a perfect 180 degrees and it is very smooth. It's not too loose and it's not so rough that you can't do it quickly. You have your diopter here, which is again, very smooth to use, doesn't bump or move on you while you're using it. So let's get into the Killbox KLBOX reticle. I have watched other videos that people say the Killbox reticle is over complicated. Um, depending on how you're using it, I can sort of see where they're coming from with that. If you're using it for basic windage and elevation, it's a pretty intuitive little reticle and I really like using it. So you have the center aiming point with the partial horseshoe above it. Uh, you have your left and right runner leads and walking leads and each box, so the seven or L shapes, whatever you want to call them, um, each represent the torso. So if your torso fits inside that box, that's the approximate ranging of that uh, target. So you have your 50 yard zero with your four, five, six, seven, and 800 yard uh, points, hash points, as well as the dots for windage going either direction. I find it to be a pretty simple scope to use and there's not a lot of guesswork with your counting dots or counting dots left or right and things like that. These are very clearly marked and for torso, uh, for ranging with a torso size, I think that it's super easy to use. So if you're still with me and you haven't left the you're just a shill comment yet, um, let's get into the part that even if you think I'm lying to this point, I can't lie about, and that is the accuracy and drop test. So let's get into that. That target down there, that uh, closer one, you probably can't see the white steel target out at 352 yards, but um, the way this is gonna work is sort of how I normally do it. I have 11 rounds in here of the uh, Frontier 556. I have 11 rounds in here. I'm gonna shoot, since I forgot the my bullseye targets, I'm gonna shoot one shot and that'll be my point of aim for the rest of the test. So we'll do five shots, I'll drop it. We'll do five shots and then go down range and see what the outcome was. All right, that looks like it went to the upper left portion of the A zone. So that'll be my point of aim for the rest of the test. See if I can stabilize myself here. A 
lost my point of aim. There it is. All right, so that's five. And it looks like they all grouped pretty good right at the upper portion, upper right hand of the target portion of the A zone. Uh, mind you, this is a 50 yard zero, not a 100 yard zero. So the point of impact is a little higher. And save that one. And let's do the drop test. Get the bipod out of the way. One shot, one take. One take because, well, because you guys are brutal and will absolutely accuse me of doing this incorrectly or lying. So, shoulder height. <sighs> each side and once on the top direct hit looks like I bent my tripod a little bit or my bipod a little bit everything still looks good Make sure everything's in view. Right. Tighten that back down. A little crud on here, a little banged up. No big deal. I am moving all over the place. It would help if I charged the gun. That one's gonna be a little low. All right. Let's go check it out. All right, not looking good. Not looking good, because here's my first shot. One, two, three, four, five. I have no idea where the rest went. I was using this as my point of aim. One, two, three, four, five, kept a good group there. Let's go back, load up five more rounds, and see where it's hitting now. All right, let's see where it is hitting. Let me go high on the target.
I'm not seeing it anywhere. That was that last shot was head box, and I'm not seeing a hit. Let me go all the way down to the bottom. I don't see anything. All the way center right, our, our right as we're looking at it. And I don't see a hit. Center left. And I don't see a hit. We go under it. We go over it. And there are no new holes in the target anywhere. Nothing. I could not say, <coughs> I could not say one way or the other <coughs> where everything is going. The glass is not cracked. The zoom ring seems to be where it should be or operating how it should be. Like it's not like the tubes bent or something like that. All right, I have moved the target into 50 yards, which is where my zero, which is where this is zeroed at. I moved it in 50 yards, and the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to uh, tell you how far off it went, and it's just missing the target, and that's not a good enough answer for me uh, because I want to be very clear on what happened. So, the A of the A zone. And do that again. We go down to the bottom of the C zone. That was center bottom of the C zone. We go to the center of the neck. Nothing. Let me go full right side. Uh, the target's right, our left. Okay. It moved directly right of, so what is that? Uh, eight inches? Eight inches right? Let me do a follow up. Yeah, so I am all the way on the left side of the target and I, my elevation is still good or seemingly still good, but I'm hitting the A of the A zone. Let's go down there. All right, so I was aiming here and hit those two. I also noticed when I went to get it earlier that one of these, I think it's this one, was apparent. So when I told you earlier I was aiming at the A of the A zone, that was probably that shot. And then I told you again that I was aiming at the A of the A zone, and that's that shot. So it moved, whatever that is, nine inches, almost directly right. So at 100 yards, that is 18 inches. That is the full width of the target that it moved right. So I can almost hear the delete button, the backspace button happening right now for the people that didn't get to this point and called me a shill and that I was bought and paid for and everything else. Uh, this thing absolutely failed the drop test, which is unfortunate because I really did enjoy using this scope up to this point. 
this is one of the reasons I tend to do the drop tests for you during the review process, during the final uh, video. Um, it's that level of transparency that some other channels don't have. So that is it. The review is officially over. Once an optic fails, there's nothing left to say. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Is what it is. Shit happens on the range and this didn't hold up. Uh, just so everybody's aware, everything is tight. Nothing is loose. The mount is not loose. It is not wobbling. I cannot spin this. It is torqued to the right pressure. Uh, one of the things Arkin does that I really like is that they actually stamp it into their rings of what the torque specs are, 18 inch pounds. It is torqued to the right specs. Uh, and yeah, it just didn't hold zero. All right, I'm sure that's not the outcome Arkin was looking for, but transparency with my channel is, well, very clear. Didn't hold zero. I would like to thank Arkin for sending that scope out. I do have one to give away if you're interested in it and you don't plan on dropping it on hard Arizona dirt. Um, be on the lookout on my Instagram for that giveaway coming up. It is an extremely usable scope. I have had a, a, a ton of fun using it. I think it's it, it, it does its job exceedingly well right up until you get rough with it apparently thanks for watching everybody don't, don't forget to hit like share subscribe hit that notification bell leave that comment down below where you uh where you had to recant that i was a salesman for arkin because i had nice things to say about it at the beginning yeah go ahead and leave that comment about how you had to recant that comment that'd be awesome other ways to support the channel are to become a member you get members only posts, you get previews and things of that nature. Uh, I do appreciate all my members and Ko-Fi supporters. Ko-Fi is sort of like a Patreon. I don't push it very much. I got kicked off Patreon a long time ago. However, you can go over to Ko-Fi and become a member there as well. Thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for everybody's support. We'll talk to you later.